Hey, Daisy here. I'm just your normal 19-year-old college girl living away from home for the first time and can't deny that it could get lonely sometimes. And I felt homesick a lot. But it's okay, though, as I have Lucas, my loving boyfriend. Okay, yeah, his family is well off, so he always treats me to nice places and buys me nice gifts. A few months ago, he told me to move in with him in his family's mansion, and I've agreed. But don't get me wrong, I'm not a gold digger at all. I just had no other choice. It all started one night when thieves broke into my apartment while I was asleep. It was terrifying. I knew they were ransacking my living room and stealing my TV and laptop, but I'd rather stay put to protect myself. After that, I didn't want to be home alone at all anymore. Lucas, too, was worried for me, so one evening he told me, Daisy, I think you should come live with me, at least until you find a roommate. Wow, I wasn't expecting that, but I guess it made sense. I felt a bit awkward about it, though, as I've only been to his house, or should I say his parents' mansion, a few times. And although there was plenty of space, and his parents adored me, but I didn't want to feel like I was intruding. Sensing my apprehension, he continued, I've explained the situation to my parents, and they're cool with it. I smiled at him and replied, Well, okay then, but it will just be temporary. Before I moved in with Lucas and his family, I felt very anxious. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to adapt to their lifestyle, and I didn't want to upset his parents. I worried a lot, but not once did I think my trouble would be with the maid. Yep, you heard me right. On my first day at the mansion, a cheerful woman immediately ran towards me and greeted me. Mrs. Harris introduced her to me. This is our maid, Sarah. She's been with us for years, so if you have any problem, just ask her. We're all family here. Make yourself comfortable. Then Sarah quickly grabbed my suitcase and smiled at me. Miss, let me help you with that. I'll show you to the room. It was so strange having someone else do stuff for me like this. I could just smile back and follow her upstairs. That made me feel so welcomed here and how nice this maid was. Maybe we could be friends. But suddenly, a thump cuts off my thoughts. It was Sarah. She'd thrown my suitcase to the floor, then said, What on earth do you have in there? Carry it yourself. Your room is down the hallway to the left. And she walked off. What was that? Did I do something wrong? I quickly picked up my stuff in confusion. I didn't want to make an enemy of anyone here, especially not on my first day. So after I unpacked my stuff, I went down to the kitchen to help her prepare dinner. She was still so grumpy at me and told me to just get lost as I'd only be in her way. I remained persistent as I really wanted to resolve whatever her misunderstandings about me were. Eventually she gave in and said, Fine, you want to help? Go dice up all of those onions. Yes, sure, but all of these? I asked her while staring at a basket full of onions. Are you going to help me or not? She said sharply. I replied, okay, okay, don't worry, I'll do it. I tried starting up a convo with her, but she just rolled her eyes at me. Meanwhile, the onions were giving me hell. My eyes were burning and tears were streaming out. Ouch! When I finally finished, she stared at my swollen eyes and said, if you're that upset about living here, you could just leave. It's the onions, I told her. She smirked as she took them off me, then walked straight to the trash and threw them away, saying, You took too long. I didn't need it anymore. What? My face dropped, but I was far too exhausted to argue with her anyway. That's when Lucas and his parents came down for dinner. Sarah quickly set up the tables, then called me over with a bright smile as she pulled out a chair for me. Miss Campbell, please take a seat. Dinner is ready. Was she for real? I couldn't keep up with her constant change in personality. After dinner, I approached Sarah while she was doing the dishes. Look, I'm sorry, but did I do something to upset you? Yes, you sure did. You waltz around like you own the place, but you're nothing more than a parasite. And I won't let you worm your way into my home. Before I had time to process her words, she grabbed an expensive-looking marble plate and smirked at me as she dropped it onto the ground. Then, with a piece of broken plate, she quickly slit her hand and yelled out loud, Miss, I'm so sorry for vexing you, but you shouldn't have broken this. It's Mr. Harris's favorite plate. Hearing the crashing sound, everyone quickly gathered in the kitchen and stared at me for answers. I immediately explained, no, it's not like that. But Mrs. Harris said, it's okay. Let's help Sarah first. Then she led her off to get the first aid kit. I grabbed Lucas's arm. Babe, I really didn't do that. He reassured me with a smile. Daisy, don't worry about it. You don't understand. Sarah did it on purpose and blamed me. 
He laughed as if he'd just heard something ridiculous, then said, No way! I bet it was just some sort of misunderstanding. Sarah is really nice. Don't worry, you two will get close in no time. Now let me clean up this mess. You go and relax. I felt frustrated and fed up, but I reluctantly went back to my room. This girl was definitely on to me. But for what reason? Over the following weeks, her vendetta against me continued. She washed my white clothes with colored ones, then intentionally threw away my stuff and made out she mistook it for trash while cleaning my room. She put extra hot chili flakes in my food, then rushed over with a glass of water when I started to choke, and so on. Worse still, Lucas and his parents wouldn't hear a bad word said against her. They were completely oblivious to how crazy she was. I didn't understand why she hated me so much. Was she jealous of me or something? All right then, if she wanted to play with me, then game on. So I decided to spy on her to catch her red-handed and show everyone her true self. My chance to expose her finally arrived. I was passing her room and I saw her holding a watch. I recognized it. It was Mr. Harris's. She looked shifty as she placed it into her drawer and hid it underneath some of her clothes. Aha! Got her! I quickly ran to the garden to find Mrs. Harris and managed to persuade her to come with me to Sarah's room. Sarah stood by looking all innocent as Mrs. Harris checked her drawer, but the watch wasn't there, and instead we found it still intact on the vanity in the master bedroom. Huh? At that moment, Sarah suddenly bawled out, Ma'am, I would never steal from you. You know that. I've gone out of my way to please Miss Campbell here, but she's intent on making my life a misery. Oh my god. Those crocodile tears. Did she have no shame? I tried explaining myself to Mrs. Harris, but she held up her hand and told me she didn't want to hear it. I wanted to make amends, so the next morning, I prepared Mrs. Harris's favorite smoothie and breakfast for her. I set it up nicely on the dining table, then went upstairs to get her, smirking at Sarah as she passed by. Mrs. Harris seemed happy with the gesture, but just an hour later, she said she didn't feel well. She was clutching her stomach as she glared at me and blamed me for poisoning her food. What? How frustrating! And Lucas wasn't even home for me to talk to. So I went to the kitchen to check the expiration date of everything I'd used. But I swear it was all fresh. I even went through the trash to check the used milk carton. That's when I saw some sesame seeds in there. That's odd, as I knew Mrs. Harris was allergic to them, so we never had them in the house. It had to be Sarah. She must have poisoned the breakfast with them when I was out of the room. Later that day, Mrs. Harris was feeling better, so I went to see her and told her that I was leaving, on one condition. Then I persuaded her to come into my room and hide in my closet. By this point, I think she was willing to do anything just to get me out of her house. Then I called Sarah over to help me pack up my stuff. She stepped into my room with a cocky smile and knocked over the box of my stuff, then said, I was always going to win. I replied, fine, you win. But before I leave, I want to ask you something. You put sesame seeds in the breakfast I made for Mrs. Harris, didn't you? Sarah looked around to check no one else was about before she grinned at me and said, Yes, it was me, all me. While you were sucking up to Mrs. Harris, I ground some up and mixed them into the disgusting smoothie you made. Oh, I also pretended to steal the watch because I knew you were spying on me. Jeez, you made it so easy. But why? I asked, but why? She imitated my voice. Because this is my family. I've lived here for years. You can't just show up all pretty and carefree and expect to have everything and push me out of my own home. I never wanted to push you out. All I wanted was to be your friend. As if. This is my gold mine, not yours. Sooner or later, all of this will be mine, and God knows I deserve it. I've put up with this annoying family and a poor salary for years. Mr. Harris always dreamed of having a daughter, but no. He's stuck with that dumb son of his. It's only a matter of time until he realizes I can be the daughter he longed for. Or, now that you won't be around, it'll be easy for me to trap Lucas by having his baby. Either way, the winner is always me. Suddenly, the wardrobe doors burst open and out emerged Mrs. Harris, looking furious. She pulled Sarah's hair and dragged her out of the room. Wow, who knew the mild-mannered Mrs. Harris could be so kick-ass? I guess everyone has a hidden side. Anyway, this proved my innocence and Sarah was kicked out right on the spot. Then Mrs. Harris apologized to me and insisted that I should keep staying with them. I thanked her for the offer but politely declined. As I felt ready to leave and move in with my friend, 
I was just relieved that she'd learned the truth and that Sarah had gone once and for all. So, Lucas and I are still together and are very happy. Yes, it was annoying he didn't believe me at first, but he's such a sweet and trusting guy that he'd never expect someone could be capable of such horrible things. But hey, that's just one of the many reasons why I love him. As for his parents, well, I still visit them sometimes. I even cook for them now and then, but thankfully, there have been no more sesame seed incidents, and there's no more crazy maid to contend with. Phew! This must be Nymphalidae! No, it's Amethusidae! Look at the pattern on its wings! Oh man, how can they be so obsessed about some dumb insects? Yawn! I walked over to Caden and pulled on his sleeve. Caden, let's go take some photos by the stream, it's- Gloria, you just made it fly away! It flew away by itself, not my fault! So bothersome! Why are you following us? Didn't you say we were enemies? You must be wondering who that guy is, and why he's so moody. He's Caden, the boy I'm trying to win over. It's down to him that now, a girl as amazing as me has to spend her entire weekend trapezing around the woods. Ugh, I don't even like insects, and I really dislike his sister, Chloe. About the enemy thing, well, it is sort of true. You see, Caden's my neighbor, and somehow, he always managed to appear at the worst possible moment and sabotage my things. One time, I was climbing over the fence to sneak out with some friends, when Caden showed up and he made a scene out of it. So my dad immediately dragged me inside and gave me a prize of one week being grounded. Another time, I was innocently sitting in the garden, copying an essay off the internet, when once again, Caden appeared, saw what I was doing, and made a fuss about it. So, yep, you guessed it. My dad overheard and grounded again. This poor Gloria. Ugh! I really did hate his guts back then. But my feelings then changed 180 when he once saved me from drowning. Well, I wasn't actually drowning, I just had cramps. But the fact that he dove in to save me was enough. Since then, I only had eyes for him. But no matter how hard I try, he's always so cold towards me. There's no way I'm giving up that easily. You see, someone as dazzling as me has a habit of getting what I want. With this in mind, I ran after them, but a branch got in my way, and I rolled down a hill. Everything around me was spinning, and the world went black. Gosh, my eyes. What was with the blinding bright lights? I tried to sit up, rubbed my eyes, then saw Caden frantically running towards me. Gloria, you're awake! Are you in any pain? Oh, yeah, right. I fell and fainted. But hold on, is Caden worried about me? Hmm, if only he treated me like this all the time. Suddenly, an idea flashed through my mind. Aha! Uh -huh. Gloria, are you okay? Huh? Who are you? Why am I here? Caden panicked and ran to find a doctor, while Chloe rushed over to me. You seriously don't remember us? I pretended to be so surprised, eyes opened wide and asked who Chloe was. Then the doctor came in. After a few tests, he said there was no severe injury, but I must have been suffering from short-term memory loss. Ha! Huh, of course, my acting skills were Hollywood level. And no surprises, since then, Caden's attitude towards me was so different. No more moodiness. Instead, he was so sweet. So... This whole pretending thing is totally worth it. I just had one gate to pass. That devious girl, Chloe. Anyone confident to do last week's routine? This will go in your favor towards the lineup evaluation. No way was I going to miss this opportunity. So I immediately raised my hand. After successfully completing the dance, everyone praised me. Except for Chloe. She stared at me and said, Um, don't you have amnesia, Gloria? How do you still remember this dance? Oops, I forgot about the losing my memory part. Hmm. Uh, well, I watched the dance clip online and stayed up all night practicing, as I don't want to be the black sheep of our team. 
Chloe still stared at me, but didn't say anything more. Poof, that was a close one. I'll have to be more careful from now on. The next day, I was putting my books away, when suddenly Chloe ran over, put her arm around my shoulders, and excitedly said, Hey, bestie, we're still going to the mall this afternoon? Huh? What for? Oh, I forgot. You don't remember anything. Last week, you promised to take me to pick out a birthday present. Tomorrow's my birthday, so I'll meet you by the school gates after the last bell, okay? What? What is she doing? We weren't friends, and I never agreed to buy her anything. She was just trying to get a gift out of me. Ugh! But since I was supposed to have amnesia, I couldn't expose her either. Ugh! How frustrating! Trust her to pick the most expensive dress in the shop. I laughed through my tears when I saw the price tag. A whopping $150! But that's not all, as when we were leaving the mall, suddenly Chloe turned to look at me and pulled off her fake smile again. Hey Gloria, do this with your face. I'll make a TikTok video for you. Then she showed me the phone. Huh? What is this? They're all ugly faces. I quickly waved my hand. No way! They look gross! What? That's cute! These are all the videos you sent me the other day and told me to film it for you. Then, Chloe held up her phone, and I had no choice but to do so. Gosh, I was no different from a puppet in her hands. Worse, the video quickly went viral throughout the school. And now, every time people see me, they'll imitate those silly moves and burst into laughter. Ugh! That obnoxious Chloe! Why does she keep on putting my life through hell? This weekend, there will be an overnight nature experience. Everyone seemed excited, except for me. Nature was boring. Then suddenly, Chloe spoke up. Miss, my brother, Caden, is studying biology. Can I invite him to come along and help? My ears pricked up on hearing Caden's name. Of course, the teacher agreed. This meant a whole weekend of being with Caden and sitting by the fire, leaning on each other's shoulders, and gazing at the stars. God, how romantic. But expectations did not meet reality. Caden was so busy that I hadn't even made eye contact with him yet. <sighs> I was sitting and watching Caden instruct the students on how to recognize a death cap mushroom, when suddenly someone tapped me on the shoulder. It was Chloe. Hey, let's go to the nearby stream to take photos. That's so lame. I already had like a zillion pictures taken at that stupid stream, as I've been here every week with Caden and this annoying sister of his. But, well, I suppose that would still be more fun than sitting here like this, right? So I pretended to be interested and followed her. Wow, this place is so beautiful. Stop the act. There's only the two of us now, so you don't have to fake it anymore. I know it all. Chloe smirked and continued. Now let's see how you get out of this one. Huh? Was she on to me? So all along, she was just trying to prove I was lying about the memory loss? Nice try, Chloe. But I can just call someone for help. Duh. Hey, where's my phone? God, I left it in the tent. What was I supposed to do now? I knew the way back. But if I went back by myself, it was like willingly falling into Chloe's trap and my fake amnesia would then be exposed. By then, Caden probably wouldn't even look at me. No way! It can't happen like that! Someone will come looking for me soon. Then I sat down on a nearby tree stump and waited, but it started to get dark pretty fast. And why hadn't anyone come searching for me yet? I was so hungry, I hadn't eaten anything in hours. Suddenly, the branches behind me made a strange noise, which made me tremble in fear. Setting my thoughts aside, I hurriedly found my way back to the campsite. Halfway there, I suddenly saw two figures walking towards me, but they seemed to be arguing quite fiercely. Do you know how dangerous it can be in the forest at night? What if something happened to Gloria? She knows the way back. She was just pretending to get your attention. Or are you afraid her father won't hire you again? Wait a minute. Those voices were so familiar. Were they Caden and Chloe? But what were they talking about? Dad? Hire? 
What did that mean? I took a quick step forward and was stunned when I saw Caden and Chloe in the flesh. As soon as he saw me, Caden frantically asked, Are you okay? What are you two talking about? And what does it have to do with my dad? While Caden was still perplexed, Chloe was annoyed and said, It's your dad who hired Caden to watch over and protect you. Now stop wondering why he always shows up at the right time to stop your mischief. What? What did Chloe just say? Was it really my dad who hired Caden? I needed to go home immediately to ask my dad to clear things up. I stormed off, but could still hear Chloe's voice behind me. See? I told you her memory's perfectly intact. It was all just an act. Ugh! As soon as I arrived home, I barged into my dad's office. Did you hire Caden to watch over me? Why did you do that? Seeing that he couldn't hide it anymore, Dad told me everything. Turns out, a few years ago, by chance, he'd seen Caden protecting Chloe when she was causing a scene at the grocery store, and he was impressed by his maturity. Later on, he also learned that their parents had passed away a long time ago, and they'd been living with their grandma. It's a pretty pitiful situation. So, Dad came up with the idea to pay Caden to oversee and protect me, which made him feel more assured about his mischievous, crafty daughter. And at the same time, this would help Caden's family make their ends meet. So, it turned out that the time Caden saved me wasn't because he was a good guy, but just for my dad's money. I was so disappointed and sad that I locked myself in my room for the weekend. Until... I was sunbathing in the garden when a baseball flew over the fence and almost knocked me out. I was furious. Whoever threw that could have killed me. That's when Caden appeared. He rushed over to retrieve the ball, then said to me, Hey, Gloria, I'm sorry about that. My friend's visiting, and he has terrible aim. I folded my arms and muttered out, Whatever! He started to walk away, then stopped, looked back at me, and said, Look, Gloria, your dad was paying me to protect you, and I know you and your trickster nature, so I knew from the get-go that you were faking your memory loss. The thing is, I actually found it kind of cute that you'd do that just to impress me. I gave him a skeptical look. Was he being serious? I like you. I, um, have done for a while. But I had my duties to think about. But I've given it some thought, and I've told your dad I quit. I don't want to be your security guard anymore. I'd much rather be your boyfriend. So, what do you say? Oh, how bold is this guy? I failed to hold back my smile as I replied, I suppose being your girlfriend could be fun, but no insects. Then I leaped up and hugged him. So now, Caden and I are officially together, and I don't have to pretend I have memory loss anymore. Hey, I guess it's not that surprising. I did say that I always get what I want. <laughs> Yeah, here's another load of bills to add to the pile. Oh, hey, I'm Zoe, a recent graduate turned office worker with a lousy wage. I could barely afford to pay for food and rent, let alone think about my college debt. It wouldn't matter so much if it was just me, as I could live off of noodle soup. But I also had Birdie to think about, my little sister. Oh, she's back from school. Zoe, I found Daddy today! Huh? I looked at her with a wry smile. Actually, this was nothing new. You see, our parents died when Birdie was just a toddler, so now she longed to have parents just like her friends did. She often said to me, Zoe, you're like my mommy, but Clara and Polly have daddies too, and I want one. She was so innocent that whenever she saw a friendly-looking man on the street, she'd ask me, Is that my daddy? <laughs> Come on. Come here. How was school today? Daddy is very handsome, and he lives in a big house. Come on, I'll take you to him. Oh, my lord. This wasn't a house. It was a mansion. Confused, I was about to question Bertie on this, but she started ringing the bell repeatedly. Before I could stop her, someone who appeared to be the butler came out and happily let us inside without questioning anything. 
That's odd. I sipped on my iced tea and peered around at the grandness of the place, absorbing the rich energy, when suddenly, a very dashing guy walked over. There he is! That's Daddy! Huh? This was so confusing, and seeing her hug a stranger was super embarrassing. I had a talk with the guy to figure out what happened, and apparently he's called Harry, and he's 22 like me. Huh? That's crazy, as he looks and acts way older. As for the dad story, it turns out as Bertie was waiting for the school bus, she saw a woman drop her purse. So she rushed over and picked it up and was about to return it, but the woman turned around, saw Bertie holding it, and accused her of being a thief. Just in time, Harry appeared and claimed to be her father to settle the matter. Then he took her to the mansion and showed her around. So that's what happened. Ugh, oh, my sister. Bertie has told me everything. She's such a precious child. I'd happily adopt her. No way! Why not? You like being here, don't you, Bertie? Zoe, I really like it here. I can play with Oreo as much as I want. And now, I have a daddy just like Clara and Polly do. But I can't just leave her alone? Of course not. You can stay with Bertie. <laughs> What? How come such a good person suddenly fell from the sky? Skeptical, I told Harry I needed more time to think. He smiled and handed me his business card, and told me to call him any time. What is this? Harry Atkins, the eldest son of the chairman of ATLAC Corp? Unbelievable! His name was all over the internet as a rich and educated young man. If that was the case, then... Surely this had to be legit, right? <sighs> I can't afford to pay these. My sister and I deserve better than this life. Besides, it would be nice to have a place to stay for free, right? So the next day, I went to see Harry and offered to help with the housework as payment. Harry agreed and presented a prepared contract. Contract? Okay, but there was a clause in it that required me not to mention that I was Bertie's sister. Hmm, this was a little odd, but never mind, it didn't matter. Here was to our new luxurious life. Wait, but does that mean I also have to call him dad? <laughs> so, yeah, my new life began. And oh boy, it was crazy. A maid brought me breakfast in bed and did all my laundry. So much for helping out with household chores. There are actually more servants in this house than the number of staff in my office. So it's obvious that there's nothing left for me to do. Even so, I wanted to be useful, because hearing them calling me Miss made me feel quite embarrassed. However, oops, turns out I suck at house chores. Once I put Harry's fine suit in the washing machine and ended up ruining it, which made him pace up and down the room in anger. Also, he couldn't seem to say anything nice about me always complaining about the flowers I bought or saying the muffins I spent hours baking were too chewy. He threw away all of my handmade stuff because he thought it was garbage. What a rude man! Oh, wait, he's not even a man. He's just a stubborn kid who doesn't care about other people's feelings. I tell ya, if it weren't for Bertie in that contract, I'd... Poof! But those are just small gripes. In general, our life here was great. Bertie is very happy, and seeing her living her best life makes me smile. But unbeknown to me, turns out this was the calm before the hurricane. Hurricane Rachel! Harry's betrothed fiancé since childhood, she's from a rich family and is therefore deemed a suitable marriage alliance to Harry's family. I overheard the servants in the house saying that Harry is the successor to the company. So when he marries Rachel, the company will be even more flourishing. As soon as she saw me, Rachel kept asking Harry, Hey, who is this? Why is she here? And this girl too? Why is there a kid in the house? Who is this scary lady? Hearing that, Rachel looked at me from head to toe and then started firing questions at me. Why are you here? How do you know Harry? When are you leaving? Enough! What a relief. Harry intervened just in time, then dragged her into the reading room. Rachel followed Harry, but didn't forget to wrap her arms around his neck as she peered at me with a smug look on her face. Huh? What does she mean by that? Ugh, is she... jealous? 
If that's the case, then she's wasting her time. Because it is true that I have a crush on someone, but it's not Harry. You see, the other week I was wandering home from the grocery store when I met the love of my life. My shopping bag split, and my soda, cookies, and potato chips tumbled out. I was trying to pick everything up without getting run over, when suddenly a guy appeared and helped me. Then he drove me home. His name's Marcus, and he's so hot. After that, we exchanged numbers, and have been texting ever since. Marcus is so easy to talk to, so I confided in him about everything, from Birdie being adopted to the fact that I'm now working as a housekeeper. He's so sweet and kind, and I feel like I can tell him anything. He's the prince of my dreams. Anyway, my strange life in the mansion continued. One thing's for sure, Harry was great with Bertie. For her birthday, he surprised her with a trip to the amusement park. I have to admit, we had a lot of fun together. Bertie made us go on the carousel five times. Then we got ice cream. Suddenly, I noticed Harry giving me this odd look. What? You have some ice cream on your lips. Here. He leaned forward and gently dabbed it away with a napkin. Just then, a crowd rushed in, and Harry reached out and pulled me and Bertie closer to him. Our eyes met, and... Huh? Why did I have goosebumps and a pounding heart? What did that mean? Did he do that intentionally or not? Why did I have this strange feeling? While I was still sinking deep in my thoughts... Harry stopped the car and said he needed to pass by his brother's place for some files. Huh? Isn't that... Marcus? Marcus? I blurted out. You two know each other? I didn't answer. Instead, I turned my attention to Bertie. When we got home, I kept wondering why Marcus never told me who he was. I texted him to ask, and he replied that they don't get along, so he didn't want me to know. Hmm... Despite all that, I stayed up all night thinking about Marcus. And, and, um, also Harry. It's safe to say I was confused about everything. Then, Marcus and Rachel suddenly showed up at Harry's house one day with a load of groceries. Rachel announced that she was baking a cake, as it's soon going to be her birthday, and we should all assist. Okay, weird, but whatever. I was preparing the mixture when Marcus took my stirring hand and insisted on helping me. Suddenly, Harry burst in between us. Upon seeing this, Rachel yanked on his arm and pulled him away. My eyes widened in horror as I saw the mixture fly into the air and slow-mo splatter all over us. We stood there covered in cake mixture as we all exchanged dirty looks. Um, okay, so after that little display, I think it's clear to say that Harry has feelings for me. Later on, when Marcus and Rachel had left, and I was freshly showered, Harry knocked on my door, and smiling at me said, Zoe, there's a family dinner tomorrow, where you'll get to meet my parents. Don't worry, you won't have to say anything. As a way of saying thanks, I'll pay off your college debts. Okay, so that was weird, but at this point, I'd learned not to question it anymore. Besides, it would be so nice to be debt-free, and it was just dinner right? I want to break off the engagement with Rachel. This is my girlfriend, and we already have a kid together. Wh- what I almost blurted out, but Harry squeezed my hand to stop me from saying anything, so I sat there with a dumbfounded look on my face. Right at that moment, Marcus and Rachel burst in. Stop the act! Mom, Dad, this isn't his girlfriend, and that little girl is actually her sister. She's just some poor maid. Yes, that's right. I've known all along. I'm the one who told Marcus to pretend to like you to get proof. Wh what is all this? Mom, Dad, I don't think a liar like him should be the heir of your company. I hope you rethink your decision. I didn't understand. What's going on here? Girlfriend? My child who? The heir of what? I just knew one thing only that I was fooled by both my crush and Harry. I felt like such an idiot. So I quickly grabbed Bertie, packed up all my stuff, then ran out of that mansion immediately. Poor innocent Bertie seemed so confused. 
She kept asking where her daddy was and why she couldn't stay with him. I took what was left of our savings to rent a small apartment for both of us. Life went back to normal. Final demand letters and all. This was our reality. I knew that now. The last two months were like a dream. It was time to wake up. But still, I felt a pang of sadness whenever I thought about how Harry had fooled me. I was snooping around online and saw an article about how Marcus had taken over the company, only to end up bankrupt due to his poor decision-making. As for Harry, well, he'd founded his own startup, and it seemed to be doing pretty well. But then, one sunny day, I was on my way to pick up Bertie from school when a familiar person walked alongside me. Hey, it's a nice day, isn't it? Harry? What do you want? Look, I admit that at first, I was just using you to get out of my engagement with Rachel. But then, I... I... I want you and Bertie in my life. I love you, Zoe. Please come home with me. Admit it. Come on. You took my necklace, didn't you? Mindy looked at us and shook her head. She was sweating. Well, there are only three of us in this house, and if Andy didn't take it, then obviously it was you. Seriously, Cass, you got to believe me I didn't take it. But clearly she was lying, because when I rummaged through her bag, Cass's necklace was right there. Cass told her to get out of her house, and Mindy burst into tears. Poor Mindy. I really wanted to stop Cass, but she seriously hates people touching her stuff, so I just kept quiet. You see, Cass and I are pretty much joint at the hip. We've always lived in the same neighborhood, so we grew up together and shared everything. Well, almost everything. Except one little secret that would probably ruin our friendship forever if she found out about it. Andy, what are you doing? I started to stammer. Uh, um, uh, um... This is so cute. Honestly, I'm so upset about Mindy. I can't believe she'd do something like that. I smiled, not knowing what to say. I mean, it was me who'd exposed her. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. Right at that moment, we got to the checkout. Cass took everything out of the cart to give to the cashier. Hang on, she exclaimed. What is this? This item has the barcode ripped off. The cashier made a fuss for a while and even called the manager. Cass and I stood there for ages, trying to figure out what was going on. Cass even started crying, thinking she'd be accused of shoplifting. After about 30 minutes, the store manager came and told us we could leave. They kept the items that had no barcodes and sent us on our way. Phew, that was close. What? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. I'm just relieved that we didn't get into any trouble. Just so you know, though, that wasn't the first time we'd got ourselves into an awkward situation while out shopping. Sometimes it was the torn barcodes, sometimes the tags were missing, then the security alarm would always go off at the door, and all of these situations weren't just coincidences. Okay, I gotta be honest here. The thing is, I have a habit of pilfering. Not because I can't afford stuff. I mean, my dad's the owner of a bank, so money isn't the issue. My dad basically buys me the latest phone every month. And you should see my wardrobe. I have all the designer bags. I steal because it gives me the kind of thrill that my boring daily life just can't give me. My dad just hands me money every day and never stops to think that maybe I'd like a hug or a how are you ever since my mom left when I was just a baby. He's been using money as a way to keep the peace. So one day when I was in elementary school, I stole a hairpin from the girl who sat next to me. It felt so good, like my own little secret. I loved the drama that came with it. And the fact that no one ever suspected me, because I was such a rich little girl. After the hairpin, I got addicted to stealing little things and couldn't stop. It felt like the only thing I could control in my life, and so I kept on doing it. And here I am now, still getting a buzz from it every single time. And yep, you've guessed it. The one who took the necklace at Cass's sleepover was none other than me, of course. But at that time, because I was so scared... I slipped the necklace into Mindy's bag and pretended to find it there. I was deep in thought when suddenly Alex's scream startled me. Guys, I've lost my unicorn pen. You know the pen that glows? The whole class was suddenly in uproar. Some friends were trying to look for it. Meanwhile, Alex was walking straight towards me. 
Andrea must have taken it. This morning when I took out the pen, me and her were the only ones in here. I looked up at Alex, my heart pounding in my chest. This is it. I'm so done this time. Then I suddenly looked over at Scott Parker, the cute boy who just transferred to our class. Oh no, I couldn't give him a bad impression of me. I had to quickly think of a way out of this. You waited until I went to the bathroom to take it, didn't you? Alex, I'd never do such a thing. Besides, I have loads of nice pens. In fact, you can have one if you'd like. I pulled out a beautiful pink rhinestone pen from my pencil case and handed it to Alex. While Alex stared in awe at my pen, I suggested everyone go check their lockers to see if her pen was there. Sure enough, right by the lockers was the glowing unicorn pen she'd lost. Right in front of Scott. I picked up the pen and handed it to Alex. I'm so upset you thought I'd steal this from you. But it's okay. At least we found it. Alex blushed and apologized to me. Our other friends also blamed Alex for not looking for it carefully enough and for jumping to conclusions about me. Next time, don't be so silly. Andrea is a good person. Besides, her family is so wealthy. Why would she need to steal a pen from you? I just smiled and walked away. Suddenly, a voice called out from behind me. It was Scott. He looked at me and said, Wow, that was totally dramatic. I'm Scott, by the way. You're Andrea, right? I'm sorry if this is a bit forward, but here's my number. Excuse me? Am I dreaming? Of course I texted him as soon as I got home. He said he was so impressed with how I'd handled being blamed for the whole thing. Soon we were chatting every day, and eventually he asked me to be his girlfriend. I was so happy. But there was just one small problem. Ever since we'd started dating, I felt really ashamed about my bad habit of stealing things. I was determined to give it up, but it wasn't going to be easy. One day, Scott came to pick me up and asked if I wanted to go to the bookstore. A bookstore? No, I don't want to go there. Can we go somewhere else, please? Seeing me panic like that, Scott looked puzzled. Then he suggested we go to his place to watch a movie, which I was fine with. Hopefully there would be no temptations for stealing there. A middle-aged woman opened the door for us at Scott's place. Oh, this is Sandra, our maid. Hi, Sandra. I'm Andrea. But instead of saying hi back, Sandra just stared at me in a seriously creepy way. It actually sent shivers down my spine. After watching the movie, Scott and his mom invited me to stay for dinner. Scott's mother, Mrs. Doris Parker, was really sweet, and we had some interesting chats. While waiting for dessert, I got up to go to the bathroom. But as I stepped out there, I almost bumped into Sandra. She was just standing there staring at me again. Uh, sorry. She didn't say anything, but just kept staring at me in this weird way. Oh my gosh, why was she looking at me like that? The next morning at school, Scott told me his mother had just lost a valuable ring. She had a jewelry tray next to the bathroom sink, and after washing her hands, she'd forgotten to put her ring on. After dinner, the ring was no longer there. I comforted Scott, then made an excuse to go to the ladies' room. I needed to seriously think about this. Honestly, I'd tried my best to not get the urge to steal at Scott's place. But when I'd seen Doris's beautiful ring, no, I had to find a way to return it. No one could find out about this. And I had sworn to myself that I would never let this happen again. Hello, Sam. Huh? Where's Sandra? Oh, she was fired. Mrs. Parker said Sandra had stolen her jewelry. Anyway, may I help you? Oh, no. I had to return this ring immediately. Poor Sandra. Scott came down for me and said he'd make dinner. I glanced through the window to find Doris was having tea in the garden. This was my chance. I snuck up to her room, quietly tiptoed in, and headed towards her jewelry box. Suddenly, the light came on. Tell me what on earth are you doing here? I quickly turned around, dropping the ring to the floor. M Mindy? Why are you here? I'm Scott's cousin. So it was you who stole the ring. I can't believe my cousin is dating you. Hearing the noise, Scott and his mom ran upstairs while I was still dumbfounded and speechless. It was you who stole Cass's necklace too, wasn't it? She won't even speak to me because of you. I'm so sorry. I know it's not okay, but I couldn't stop myself. I've been feeling so guilty, so that's why I'm returning it. I was still kneeling on the ground when a hand reached out to me and helped me stand up. I'll handle this. Come on, let's have a chat outside, shall we? Turns out Mrs. Parker is a therapist. She could see I had a problem and offered to help me. 
I told her how guilty I had been feeling about Sandra getting fired and asked Doris if she could call her for me so I could apologize. Thirty minutes later, Sandra arrived. As soon as Doris saw her, she apologized and offered her the job back. But no, no, ma'am, I was the one who stole it, and I deserve to be punished. I'm sorry, Sandra, I've already confessed to Mrs. Parker that I stole the ring. I didn't mean to get you fired. I just couldn't help it. You didn't do anything wrong. I, it was me? I was greedy? She is innocent. What on earth is going on? Obviously I was the thief, so why was she defending me? Why are you doing this? Do we know each other, Sandra? And that's when the truth came pouring out. Sandra was my mom. Yeah, I don't know how this is possible either. So according to her words, she'd had a huge fight with my dad when I was a baby, and she'd fled to another city where she found a job working for Scott's family. When they moved to Seattle, she came with them. Even though she was nervous about returning back to where me and my dad were, she'd carried so much guilt about leaving us, and never in a million years did she expect to bump into me at Scott's house. I was so shocked, I couldn't even speak. I'd imagined this moment my whole life, and now... Here I was, standing face to face with her, and she'd even taken the blame for me. I couldn't believe it. Mom, I'm so sorry that I stole the ring. I, I can't believe you're really here. Sweetie, you don't need to apologize. I'm the one who will be apologizing for the rest of my life, abandoning my daughter like that. What kind of mom am I? How will you ever forgive me? We stood there hugging for what felt like forever, and I knew in that moment that I'd never steal again. Doris diagnosed me as having kleptomania due to a lack of love for my mom, but now that my mom was back, I had no reason to seek out those thrills from stealing. I had everything I needed right here. There were a few moments where I almost stole again, but Doris told me to call my mom as soon as I felt the urge, and when my mom picked up the phone and I heard her voice, the urge faded, and I felt so much better. Scott and Cass and Mindy forgave me after Doris sat them all down and explained more about my addiction and where it stemmed from. Now, Scott and I are still together, and I see my mom every day at Scott's place. My dad hasn't forgiven my mom for leaving yet, but baby steps. Finally, I feel like everything is complete, and my pilfering is a thing of the past. Wow, it's been a busy day at the salon. What can I say? It's all thanks to my top-notch hairstyling talent. Ta-da! What did you do to my hair? Platinum blonde is the current trend, ma'am. I- I asked for brown! How can I go to school looking like this? Ugh, she has no eye for beauty. <sighs> but, oh no, this dumb machine? <sighs> At least it's not completely burned. Were you dosing off while cutting my hair? Give us our money back, now! Money? I've only worked here for a week. How am I supposed to pay them back? Ask my parents? No way. I, the beautiful Olivia, had declared in front of them that I hated school and would build my own career through my passion for hairstyling, not with any of those boring books. So, I left my hometown and got a job at this fancy hair salon in the big city. I would prove to my parents that I could actually earn money with my talent. Ugh, but now my boss was going berserk at me. Oh, dearie me. There's no need to make a fuss over such a measly amount of money. I shall pay for it on her behalf. I turned around and wow, it was this graceful looking middle-aged woman. Her outfit, hairstyle, and manners all screamed elegance and luxury. Pretty girl, I can see that you have a keen eye for beauty. The only thing you're missing is an experienced mentor's guidance, and I happen to know someone. I can't believe it, Mr. Fullington. The world's number one hairstylist was going to be my mentor. Of course, it's all thanks to this awesome lady. Oh, wait, mom. I should call her mom now, as she's just adopted me. She must have taken a liking to me seeing how determined I was, pursuing my passion despite all hardship. She and her husband are millionaires who couldn't have children, so yeah, they decided to take me in. Man, this is the best thing to happen to me ever. Olivia, school isn't the only way to success. With your talent, the road can be much shorter. My foster parents are so kind. Just look at this room. I feel like a princess. Just look at this gigantic bed, satin sheets, and walk-in closet. Better still, they even arranged for a makeup artist and a stylist to spend all day helping me look fabulous. 
The rich kid's life sure was sweet. I was so immersed in all of it that I almost forgot the main reason why I agreed to do this. The hairstyling course with Mr. Fullington. Mom, Dad, I know that you're both very busy, but I've been waiting so long. Has Mr. Fullington forgot about our appointment? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, but he's been sick, so his schedule has all been put off till next month. Don't worry, darling. In the meantime, why don't you try attending some fancy parties on our behalf? It's a good chance to expand your social circle and learn how to make money from all the best. Oh, that sounds pretty good. If I could make lots of money, then my parents would have to take me seriously and stop their stupid go-back-to-school demands. As soon as I arrived at the party, all these new friends gathered around and complimented on how beautiful I looked. The rich guys went crazy for me, too. I instantly became the center of attention. This one guy called Bruce introduced himself as the son of the CEO to the top media corporation in the US. Olivia, that exquisite face of yours was made for the big screen. You should play the leading role in our new movie. Oh, acting? I'd never thought about it before. Hmm, walking down the red carpet and posing in front of hundreds of cameras did sound appealing. It's worth a try, right? I was still stunned at Bruce's offer when I felt something cool on my finger. Oh my gosh, a sparkly red diamond ring? William, heir to the GeoGems Limited. Pleasure to meet you, Olivia. Please consider this my greeting gift. And this continued all evening, until I couldn't hold any more stuff. Flowers from Justin, a jewelry set from Andrew, a perfume collection from Antony, and this watch from... Jeez, I couldn't remember anymore. I was trying to slip away when a handsome guy blocked me. You're stunning, Olivia. Can I see you tomorrow? A date? I didn't even know him. No, no. What a pity. I'm meeting my old friends at West High tomorrow. Sorry, it's not that I'm picky or anything, but dating can't be that easy, right? Phew, finally home. What an eventful evening. Just then, I got a call from Minnie, my best friend. Minnie told me that some mean girls at school were spreading rumors that I stole money from my parents, then packed up and ran away. Okay then, let them tittle-tattle. Tomorrow, I'll show those meanies who's the real deal. Yay, it's so nice to see Minnie again. We immediately chatted non-stop about all kinds of things. Then suddenly, the hyenas appeared with the same sarcastic tone as usual. Wow, counterfeit goods are so well made these days. You know, your supposedly Birkin bag is extremely rare. There's only five of those on Earth, right? Busted! How much do supercar hourly rentals and bodyguards cost nowadays, little Miss Showoff? Minnie was going to defend me, but I stopped her. No need to waste time arguing with these people. <laughs> I then grasped Minnie's hand to leave, but look, Olivia! I looked up. There was an airplane flying at very close range, and it was writing something? O. L. I. V. The white smoke actually spelled out m my name! I've only seen this in movies! I gasped in shock as the plane landed, and stepping out of the cockpit was the guy at the party last night, Nathan. Turns out, he was the youngest pilot in America and wanted to impress me with this grand gesture after being rejected yesterday. Flying in the sky is my passion. And, Olivia, I want to be your personal pilot, taking you wherever you want. Oh my goodness, I don't know what was better. Having a rich, handsome guy going out of his way to impress me, or seeing the astonished looks on my fake friend's faces. <sighs> Such thrilling days like this should have made me happy, right? But sitting among this mountain of expensive gifts, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Being the center of smitten eyes and receiving countless compliments and gifts was cool and all, but Minnie's words awakened me. Olivia, do you think they really are generous enough to give you all this without asking for anything in return? No, I shouldn't accept these pricey items. I was putting them all back in their boxes to return them when my foster mom walked in. Oh no, darling! Returning gifts is considered very insulting in our society. <sighs> the world of the rich is so complicated. So I listened to her and dismissed the idea of returning those presents. But I should still return the favor, right? So I agreed to meet some of them. The first person must be the one who impressed me the most, Nathan the pilot. His airplane hangar was where we had our first date. 
I couldn't find anything bad about Nathan, but we just didn't click. He kept on rambling about planes, which model each was, how hard it was for him to get them, blah, 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 while I had no interest in any of this. The next guy, William, was even worse. He not only invited me, but also dozens of other beautiful girls. He even gave each girl a gemstone from his collection. A true player, so obviously a skip. Bruce was easier to talk to, but I soon realized that he had a problem. This set of glassware was custom made by the most skillful craftsman in Switzerland. It's yours if you like. Oh, wait, I'll have someone bring them over later. Look at this beautiful painting. Wouldn't it be perfect in your bedroom? Ah, but it's too big for you to carry home. I'll send it over later. What about my leading role in the movie you mentioned? <laughs> I almost forgot. But Olivia, acting is not as easy as you think. Besides, the entertainment industry is really toxic. Please just be my princess, okay? See? He kept promising me the world and then... nothing. What a boastful, stingy liar. I didn't like any of these guys, so I must return their expensive gifts. But as soon as I carried the boxes out of the room, my foster mom stopped me. My silly Olivia, why are you so concerned about this? To them, these things are merely a drop in the ocean. But if you feel uncomfortable, I'll keep them out of sight for you. Giving them back will bring shame to our family. And you don't want that, do you? All right, that seemed like the best solution. My foster parents had been so nice to me, I shouldn't cause them any trouble. But a few days later, I discovered that they had secretly used my phone to ask Bruce for more presents. He thought I was angry, so he promised me a huge surprise tomorrow. It's weird. Why did they do that? They're as rich as Bruce's family, aren't they? I asked them why, and turned out my foster parents just wanted to test Bruce, as he seemed to be the most persistent in pursuing me, but had not shown his sincerity. Early next morning, I received a call from Bruce, saying that he'd sent someone over with a luxurious car, and reminded me about our date tonight. Wait, an entire car? That's too much this time! I was about to tell him to keep it when my foster father rushed in, saying that my parents were seriously ill. Oh gosh. I quickly hung up the phone and immediately went back to my hometown. Dear God, please protect my parents. Surprisingly, my mom opened the door looking perfectly fine, and there was dad as healthy as can be watching TV. Ah, <sighs> thank goodness. My foster dad must have made a mistake. It's been a while since I was home, so I decided to stay the night. And as we were having some family time, I got another call from Bruce. Oh no, I forgot to cancel our date. And now he's at the mansion waiting for me. The problem was, Bruce couldn't find his sports car anywhere and kept on making a fuss about it. I tried calling my foster parents to resolve this, but I couldn't contact them the whole evening. The morning after, I returned to the mansion to find strangers going in and out. Um, what are you all doing? Hi, we're moving in. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's such a catch to find a good place like this up for rent at reasonable prices, right in the local newspaper, am I right? For rent? No, 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 what on earth is going on? I rushed into my foster parents' bedroom, but it was empty. Even the gifts they said they'd keep for me were all gone. They left without a trace, as if they were running away. What, did your partners in crime leave you? Now don't you dare deny it, you fraud. What did he say? Partners in crime? Fraud? I tried explaining to him how I wanted to return all the gifts I received, but he wouldn't believe me. He threatened to call the cops if he didn't get his car back. Oh no, no way that's gonna happen. All I could do was beg Bruce to give me some time. This is the home of our town's famous sheriff. He's the only person who could help me, but all I got was, I'm sorry, but I'm retired. You're gonna have to ask someone else. What to do now? I was freaking out when, out of nowhere, no need for my dad. This is a piece of cake. I can give you a hand. I turned around to see a guy leaning on the door with a cold, arrogant look, and his arms crossed. Who is this guy? Can he really help me? We'll see. Wow, Alan really took the risk and invested a lot in this. A sports car, a mansion, expensive trips, and even this huge event. I have to admit, he looks quite handsome being all dressed up. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Alan, 
Yep, the sheriff's son is playing the rich heir of a big corporation chasing after a beautiful young lady, which is me. However, I didn't expect things would turn out so real. Alan's pursuit of me even made it on the local news. You guys must be curious how someone who's not a millionaire did this. Well, Alan convinced Bruce to fund our plan. He was hesitant at first, but he soon realized that this was the only way to catch the frauds and get his stuff back. So reluctantly, he agreed. Alan is indeed a genius, and his well-thought-out strategy quickly got the fish hooked. We were making headlines everywhere, and I finally received a text from my so-called foster mom. At first, she was just asking how I was doing, and talked about how busy they were with overseas projects, until today. Olivia, how's it going with that mysterious millionaire boyfriend of yours? He seems willing to give you anything. So you will consider him, won't you, darling? As expected, these money-hungry crooks wouldn't let it slide once they heard millionaire. So I replied to her that my rich man was treating me well and wanted to throw an extravagant feast this weekend to officially announce our relationship. And I hoped my parents could put off their business trip and come join us. Tonight was the night. Gosh, I was so nervous as my mom didn't reply to that message of mine. Will they show up or did they sense something was off? While I was super nervous, Alan came to me and held my hand real tight. Don't worry, Olivia. Everything will work out as planned. My, my. What is this feeling? It's undeniable that I always feel so safe being with Alan. The party finally began. Alan proposed to me with this rare, precious surrenderby gem on a ring, which is one of the only three existing in the whole world. Everyone started buzzing. Alan's acting was so perfect, from his eye contact to the words he said, that I couldn't help but feel butterflies in my stomach. I... I do. When the party was over and all the guests left, I received a call from my foster mom telling me to go to the back gate. As predicted, they offered to keep the engagement ring for me. Drop the act, frauds! The two were still processing what was happening when the cops barged in and arrested them. It worked! Can't believe I've successfully tricked these notorious scammers. <laughs> what about my car? My Bugatti? Where is it? Oh, I almost forgot the main sponsor for this perfect plan. Without him, we definitely couldn't pull this off. Our stingy millionaire, Bruce Dillon. I bet there hasn't been a single day gone by that he didn't think about his missing gifts, huh? <laughs> that reminds me. This sparkling, precious ring, too. I quickly took it off, passed it to Alan, and told him to give it back to Bruce. But the minute the surrender by ring left my finger, Alan put on something else. Oh my god, another ring? Your role as a millionaire's girlfriend may be over, but will you be a girlfriend to an ordinary guy like me, Olivia? Yes! A million times yes! After all this mess, I now realize that I've still got a lot of learning to do. So I've decided to listen to my parents and finish school. Turns out, if I really paid attention in class, it's actually pretty interesting. And Minnie is still my amazing BFF, who let me have free reign to experiment on her hair. And of course, this cute future detective too. Babe! Time to change your hairstyle! Hi, I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon-to-be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte! Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA. Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no! My live stream's ended, and it's all his fault! Idiot, you ruined my live stream. Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you've just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. 
but not as much as live streaming, right? Who does he think he is? Charlotte even <laughs> laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest. But Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and stretched to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Ha! Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and... Was he <laughs> laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking? After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner. Everyone gawped at me while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring. Ugh, all right, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining. And for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. Fortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job and he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So the next day I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out. 
but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and wow, he's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamour of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly, everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> As soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me, accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling. Or maybe it's just my hope because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiance to arrive. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. A fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared. I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number but it kept saying error. Then I look up any information about the contest, but found Zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I gonna do? I can't just call dad to come get me, and neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright. You come first. Everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm... I'm not ready to come in. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my... Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw Mom, Dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling, saying how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. 
She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak when Charlotte burst out crying. You're right, it was me all along. She's never done anything useful yet got everything meant for me. Mom, Dad, if you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? You haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, Dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to Dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was gonna let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad are not my actual family? We're still... My biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we have always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though I am the lawful heiress of the company, I can only do harm to it. So I hope you understand and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske? Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi. Yes, I've made it. I've been waiting for this day for so long. Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but whenever you're ready, Donna, will you go out with me? How about now? Do you know what it's like to be a pampered princess? Well, I do, because my dad's a billionaire, so the high life's mine. Not only did we live in a five-story mansion, but I grew up never having to lift one of my pretty, perfect, delicate fingers. I'm Sophia, and throughout my childhood, I had everything done for me. There was a maid to brush my hair, make my bed, and even do my homework for me. I didn't even have to search my walk-in wardrobe for a daily outfit, as I had my own personal stylist for that. So what? I'm spoiled. But I can't help being so perfect. I'm far too gorgeous to be stuck in a stuffy classroom studying. Not when I could be partying or schmoozing with the stars at swanky cocktail balls. But then, one morning, after a particularly crazy night out, I arrived home with a makeup-smudged face and only one shoe. Dad frowned at me, and then he said, Sophia, you can't carry on like this. You're going to college, starting next week. But Dad, I don't need to go to college. School sucks. Plus, we have enough money to last us several lifetimes. Let's just travel and have fun. But Daddy insisted I couldn't just sleep all day and party all night. Ugh! So... I decided to major in interior design for now. Some of the course was okay. I mean, I liked the pretty fabrics, but I just didn't see the point in being there. So after a month, I dropped out and planned a long trip away with my besties. But there was one tiny problem, as paying for this trip would cost way more than my allowance could cover. So I had no choice but to don my best puppy eyes look and ask my dad for money. Daddy, please. College just isn't for me. But I really feel that going away for a while will help clear my mind. He snorted. 
I highly doubt that, Sophia. You're lazy, self-centered, and you rely entirely on everyone to support you. You're twenty, for God's sakes, so act like it. I pleaded back. But, Daddy, I just want to have some fun with my friends. Then get a job, and spend your own money on whatever you like. But if you carry on behaving this way, then don't expect any more handouts from me. You're lucky that I still haven't kicked you out, Sophia. But soon... What? That's so unreasonable. He was my father. It's his duty to support me. Jeez, did he not love me at all? I was so mad that I shouted, You're just some sad, selfish old man! Then I stormed out of there. I was instructing my maid to pack my suitcases when my mom came in and handed me a bank card, saying it's a secret between us two. Yay! Thanks, Mom. Now let the dream voyage begin. Wow, it really was heaven to me, with cocktails in the pool and lazy beach days. Well, at least, that was until my friends said they wanted a day exploring. It was hot and sticky out there, but I didn't want to be left alone, so I reluctantly tagged along. We ended up in this small forest area, and I chose to sit under a parasol while my friends went to take a dip in the nearby waterfall. Because, duh, I wasn't ruining my hair for anyone. I didn't understand how this could be anyone's definition of fun. I just hoped that my friends would hurry back. Then I heard footsteps. I turned around, thinking it was the girls, but instead, there were two men with balaclavas on. Oh no, this couldn't be good. I jumped up to my feet and began to run, but my designer sandals weren't made for swift exits, and soon they caught me. I screamed out as a smelly cloth went over my mouth. After that, the world began to darken around me. I flickered my eyes open. Jeez, it was so sunny. Where were my sunglasses? That's when I heard two voices, and I remembered being kidnapped. I heard the one man say, Got her phone? The other replied, Of course, I don't want to upset the boss. I was so scared that I pretended to still be unconscious. Then suddenly, I heard the sound of the engine starting. I opened my eyes and saw the men driving away. Now, I was all alone in some field. What? Why would anyone kidnap someone, then just leave them in the middle of nowhere? My friends must be so worried about me. I needed to contact them. But how? I had no idea where I was, and no phone. Ugh, I should find a way out of this deserted place first, then borrow someone's phone. The kidnappers had left a bag next to me, which had a bottle of water, some snacks, and some gross-looking sneakers in it. Yuck, but I had no choice but to put them on, as my sandals were now torn. Ew, I would need so many pedicures to recover from this. I took the bag with me and started walking. After what felt like hours of torture, a farmhouse finally came into view. I whooped with joy and knocked on the door, but no one answered. I know trespassing is wrong, but this was an emergency. So I pushed the door open and ventured inside. I was just going to make a quick phone call, then I'd leave. But then I accidentally stumbled and knocked over a vase. A smashing sound broke the silence. I panicked and was about to run away, but from upstairs, a man came down and shouted, Stop! Thief! Before I could explain, he grabbed my hand and pulled me back. I tried explaining that I wasn't a thief, but he gave me a skeptical look and said, Well, in that case, you can leave once you've paid for my vase. That's a collectible. What? This ugly thing? Ugh! I told him I would as soon as I made a phone call, so he doubtfully passed me his cell. I stared at it. Um, turns out I have never cared to remember any of my friend's numbers. I then thought about calling my parents, but no way. I was mad at dad, and asking for his help right now only meant accepting defeat. No, never. I told the man I would pay when I got home, but he refused to let me go. After a while of arguing, he forced me to stay and work for him until I paid it off. He even made up an agreement and made me sign it. And what other choice did I have? Yep, 
I was completely stuck here. This was the worst day of my life. He said his name was Manson. Then he showed me where I'd be staying. Um, this had to be a joke. It was a barn. Literally. There was an uncomfortable looking bed in there, and I could hear horses neighing in the barn next door. Was he kidding me? I was sitting there in despair when my stomach rumbled with hunger, so I barged into the kitchen and ordered Manson to make me some food. But he just pointed at the eggs by the stove and told me to make myself something to eat. Um, sure, I'd definitely do that. If I knew how to cook? Manson just sat there smirking while I threw the whole egg into the pan and then spent the next half hour trying to work out how to turn the stove on. In the end, I gave up and returned to my so-called room with an empty stomach. If you think that was bad, well, things soon got a lot worse. At 5 a.m., a noisy rooster woke me up and then started my disastrous days at the farm. I accidentally dropped the bag of seeds onto the floor and got them in my hair, so the chickens chased me around the pen to get to them. I slipped over in the pigsty. Ew! I chipped a nail cleaning out the rabbit hutch. I even fell into horse manure. It was awful. Then on top of it all, Manson was so rude. He just laughed at me struggling with everything. But then one day, it all got too much for me. I was exhausted and felt so dizzy that I stumbled and broke two baskets of eggs. It really hurt so bad, and I was even in tears, thinking Manson would be mad. But instead, he ran over to check on me. Then, he even cooked me a nice meal and told me that I'd been doing a great job, despite the accidents. Whoa, what's with this personality change? So, maybe he wasn't as bad as I thought? Over the next few days, I actually found myself enjoying Manson's company. We sat by the fire pit and watched the sunset. We went horse riding, and I managed not to fall off. And he even taught me how to cook. That's when I realized two things. Firstly, I'd been a brat. I was lazy, selfish, and I took everything for granted. But now I realized that with hard work came reward. And secondly, I realized that I liked Manson. A lot. So I decided to do something nice for him. I gave the barn a makeover. It was just simple things, really. I put a rug down, added some plants, hung up a few pictures and fairy lights. Then I dragged Manson over to have a look. He peered around the barn, then smiled. Sophia, this is so lovely. Then he awkwardly looked down at his feet. Look, I need to tell you something. Um, it's your dad. He hired those men to kidnap you, then paid me to let you stay here. I laughed over that ridiculous joke, but then he continued. Your dad wanted you to change your outlook on life and understand the value of money. He only has your best interest at heart. Wait, was this all just a setup? With teary eyes, I looked straight at Manson and said, I was going to tell you that I have feelings for you, but I suppose you don't feel the same. I need to go. Please tell my father to send someone to pick me up ASAP. Unless he's okay with me walking all the way back home without any phone or cash. Then I hurried out of there. He shouted after me, but I ignored him. I was so angry and upset. I continued walking until a car eventually pulled up alongside me. It was our family's driver. He took me home, then I locked myself in my room, refusing to come out. It took a few days for me to calm down enough to go confront my father, and when I did, well, I found myself running into his arms and telling him how sorry I was. He looked so shocked. I finally realized that my dad only did that because he loves me, and he wanted me to see the true values of life. I told him I would resume my studies at college, but there was something else I needed to do first. I showed up at Manson's doorstep with some carrots for the horses and a new vase. On seeing him, he grinned, then gave me the biggest hug. Guys, life isn't all about designer clothes and expensive holidays. Sometimes a stinky farm full of even stinkier animals and a cute guy, well, that can be the best place in the world. As for the future, well, 
Manson and I are both taking it slow and seeing where it goes. I do have big plans for his farm, though. I'm helping him renovate the barns into holiday cottages so other people can sample the country life, too. A part of me will always be a pampered princess. But as for the other part of me, well, it turns out she can make a mean egg bagel and outrun a pen full of chickens. Don't take life for granted. It doesn't matter how pretty and rich you are. Instead, there's far more to life than just that. <sighs> Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approves. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxury since the day I was born with this silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crave them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me, while Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your lock of gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable. But I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. Hmm, <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait, give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha, <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in awe of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? 
My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye! Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm, how about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an Ask Me a Question story on IG and it has best to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, <gasps> except for this guy. Hey Sugar Plum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove this steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> The next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe. Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet, surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight! All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well. As long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without height increase insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office, asking him for Connor's school report, and... It was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher. Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor Beth also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. 
So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me! Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy! Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into… Josh? He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now, so I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come, as the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair! Wh why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him, or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait! Why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their texts about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? 
What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. 